Hey y'all, I'm Alicia, the Southern Ladybug, and this is Sam the Great Dane. This is my channel where I talk about mostly cross stitching, but also a little, little crafting, a little crocheting, a little beading, a little cricket stuff, whatever else I get into. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate y'all coming and hanging out with me for a little while. Um, this is going to be on a couple of different clips. I wanted to go ahead and show y'all a finish that I had before I have to give it away. I don't have to give it away, but before I give it away this weekend, I wanted to make sure that y'all got to see it. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it, but I'm super proud of it. I thought it turned out really cute. So just a couple of things real quick. Um, I don't have a ton of cross stitch prog prog progress to show y'all. So I'll um, wait a little while longer and film that and then come back and and do another segment after I get some stuff to show. So this is going to be kind of a, a little crafty uh, segment. Um, I got my coloring cotton fabric of the month in, and this is a 32 count Laguna Lugana hickory, and it's really pretty. It's kind of a a tanny. I don't know what color it is, but it's pretty. I finally used my first coloring cotton on a project and I'm gonna get to that that's that's my finished project I want to show you and I enjoyed working on it it's a it's easy to stitch on but it's a little it's very soft it's very it's a little limp actually um, it was it was a little difficult to <laughs> to stitch on I stitch in hand and it was hard it, it just kind of fell everywhere it didn't have enough oomph to, to hold it up and hold its shape but it turned out fine um, it, it was a joy to stitch on. I'm, I'm not complaining about that. Um, we got together last weekend at Jennifer's from Jen's Stitching Niche and had a crafting day. You could do whatever you wanted to, but her um, project idea was to decorate pumpkins. She and her sister Sharon decoupaged fabric onto one of those plastic pumpkins. And I didn't really want to do that because I didn't want a big pumpkin sitting anywhere. I don't, I don't have a lot of space for decorations and stuff. And it's been years since I decorated for fall or Halloween or anything else. So I was like, I don't want to do that. But I have been wanting to make some crochet pumpkins that I've been seeing on a couple of my Facebook groups online. So that's what I did. I worked on crochet pumpkins. I made a small little sparkly one. I, I haven't got the stem yet. I got to go out and get a stick or a cinnamon stick or something and maybe some some picks or something to put give it some leaves and some berries or something. But that's just a variegated pumpkin. I thought it turned out cute. It's not the best yarn or I used a hook that was too big. That's, that's probably what it was. I just used a hook that was too big because you can see the stuffing through it. But it's cute anyway, and it's a, a fun little pattern. It's called a Macy pumpkin. I don't remember who the designer is, but I did get it off of Etsy. And she had a couple of different size variations. This is the large size. This is another one I made just out of orange, red heart, super saver yarn, nothing fancy. But it's a cute little design, a little bobble stitch there. I thought it was cute, but that's the large, so the little ones are going to be tiny little things. I probably won't make any of those. I can just do this one and adjust my hook size and probably make it a little bit bigger. I want to do one out of the new, well not new, but out of some of that velvet yarn. I think that would be really pretty. I haven't found any pretty folly colors. I found some at Hobby Lobby and I was going to make some fall scrunchies out of. But I didn't like how the how it made up so I made some I tried it with the yellow and this is a gorgeous color I may try to make a pumpkin out of this and see what happens I think it would be really pretty I gotta do my ends but I didn't like it as much as the Bernat velvet that I got at Michaels but it's okay so I'll you know I'll use that that skein but I wanted some they had some pretty fall colors is why I, I bought it a green and a dark red. They were pretty. The other crafty thing I have been working on is I made some 
earrings. I'm using up some floss. Well, I should have used up floss that I had, but you know, I went to Joann's and Hobby Lobby and bought some more. It was on sale at Joann's for 40 cents a skein. And so that was pretty good. Our Joann's finally got a decent DMC selection. It In the past, it has been horrid and nothing was in the right place and they were all mixed. They didn't have every color, didn't even have a space for every color. And it, it, it was awful. I didn't even bother looking. I don't care. I didn't care if it was five cents a skein. I wasn't trying to shop that because you couldn't find anything. They have finally reset that section and have the entire selection, well, the main colors, you know, they didn't have any of the variegated or etoile or anything like that, or I don't even know if they had the newest colors in the double digits, but they had most everything that you use most often. Still not set right. <laughs> Little things like that drive me crazy. I used to work at Michael's when we, when it first opened, and so I know a little bit about setting a store, setting a planogram, things like that, and they've got two huge sections of of the DMC slots but they're they're backwards so it's it's like you know one starts here and goes to 20 and then you got to go over here to 21 and come back this way <laughs> it's like just, just switch them just switch them but they're all there and they're where they're supposed to be as far as in the slots that they're labeled so I'm okay with that whatever but I wanted to make some of these crafty loop earrings and I've shown a pair of these before way back and but I finally got around to to making a bunch more in some different colors inspired by Halloween I guess but these are what they look like I guess I should have modeled them just little tassels and I used floss embroidery floss on the bottom and on some of them I used some number 10 um, crochet cotton and some I use number five and then I decided that I really like the look of just floss the DMC around the top as well and that's what these are so these are kind of some Christmassy ones green and red of a variegated red Hobby Lobby has all the variegated flavors I like those I won't show y'all each and every one of them, but I thought they were cute. I did put those, um, they're on my, I haven't put them on my Etsy shop, but they're on my Facebook page. And if y'all want to check them out, I'll put the link below to my Facebook page. Got some colors, some red and white, kind of some school colors, local school colors around here. That's all. And this one I'm working on for a friend. Um, black and gold. This is a variegated gold. And that's pretty. So that's what I've been working on. And I've been, I've got a lot of new ideas for projects for my Cricut. I want to do that. Um, I guess I'll show you these. I haven't put them together yet because I'm not completely sold on it. But Hobby Lobby has in their ribbon section, their spools of ribbon, these rolls of faux leather and some is sparkly and some looks like leather leather and some has scales on it and some has glitter on it i didn't get any glitter yet but i will anyway so i wanted to then want to make some of these faux leather earrings and so i was just playing around with my cricket and actually got it to cut out pretty easy and was pleased with it. I just hadn't decided if I need it to be double-sided. They're very thin. I'm not sure how I want to do them, but this was one of the ones that I kind of came up with. They had scales, so I did kind of a mermaid look. And I'll put a um, an earring hook up there. Maybe I'll do something else on it. I don't know. Those are cute just by themselves. That's all I did. I just did one time. But I did go back to Hobby Lobby because I've got the spooled ribbon on sale for 50% off this, this week. And these rolls of faux leather are included. So I went back and stocked up. And they had a whole in cap of really cool colors. Some floral patterns. Some buffalo check. Um, they had the red buffalo check. Black and white. 
I got some gold color. I don't know what all I got, but I um I stocked up on it since it was 50% off. And I think I'll play with that this weekend and see what I can come up with. There's some a lot of cute ideas. I want to make some of those earrings. Okay. That's all for the crafty stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a crafty weekend this weekend. I've got some ideas for some needle minders that I've been wanting to try and using the Cricut for that as well. And I've got, I've just got a lot of bad ideas. So too much, too many ideas, not near enough time. I also got this. Look at this little thing. Jen has one similar to this. I don't know if it's the same thing, but it's a little baby iron. I decided I needed that after I burnt myself with my big iron trying to iron my fabric for this project I'm about to show you. I was like, you know what? I need that little bitty iron. Doesn't take up as much room because I don't iron clothes and my iron stays in my craft room for that. I was like, I need that. So I bought it on Amazon, had it shipped, ready to go. I did start the next and last building on my Chris Mill Hill Christmas Village series. So y'all know that I've been working on this guy forever for several months, but I'll, you know, I'll do a, a house and then I'll put it down for a while. I'll do a house and put it down and do something else. And so I got started on the last one. I'm doing five in a row. And this fabric is Under the Sea Fabric, Whimsical Winter by Leslie. And so I started the last one. This is going to be the Village Inn. After I got to looking at all the different Mill Hill kits, I decided, man, I like too many of them. I think I'm going to have to do another set of five. So I got Jen to order me three others. And because I already had, I was going to do five and then one, two, one on each end framed separately or something. I don't know. what I, I don't, That's kind of what the idea was. And so I got her to order me three more to go with those two extras and I'm going to do another set of five, but I had to kind of rearrange this last one. I wanted my village in on the one end and the police station on the other end. So I put them there and then the others that I got, I think I probably showed y'all city bank toy shop and palace theater. I may have already had that one. I don't remember. Doesn't matter. But I'll get started on that. So this one won't take me long. This is the last one. And I'll be finished with this next week. I'll finish that. But it's coming along quite nicely. This is what it looks like. Village Inn. Mill Hill. Button and bead kit. So, last but not least, and then I will go for now until I have more. I put the Chatelaine down for a little bit. I wanted to finish this project, came up, and wanted to do it really quick. And then I said, you know what? I just want to go ahead and get this other Mill Hill kit done and be done with, with that project. I don't like things hanging over my head. I don't like 15 things going at one time. So, this is about the only time that I ever have multiple whips going on is if I have to stop something to do a gift or a special occasion or that stitch along that we did with our little stitchy group, things like that. Otherwise, I'm a one start, one finish kind of gal. So I showed y'all when I went to the retreat, I got the Cricut Collection Halloweenies pattern. I already put it up. I didn't get it back out, but I went ahead and stitched that and finished it as a pillow for my friend who has two little precious little weenie dogs and this is how it came out halloweenies i changed every color because i didn't have what was called for and i just used what i had is that not adorable that's so much fun by plum street samplers halloweenies i did turkey sausage for her um last year maybe the year before i don't remember how long it's been I lose track of time. This is the backing. This is, I didn't have a ton of fallish Halloweeny kind of fabric and I wanted something Halloweeny and I just didn't have a bunch. So this is all I had that was remotely close to it. I wanted to use what I had. 
I did go by Joann's and look, and I just didn't see anything. They had some really pretty fabrics, but I just didn't see anything that would go with this. Some really cool stuff to make project bags out of, though, and I did, was tempted to buy that, but I was like, I ain't buying no more fabric. So that's what I had. And then I wanted to do, I've never done a finish like this where I've added extra fabric anywhere. I just make a pillow, front and back pillow. I was like, I want to do something a little different. So I text Jennifer and I said, hey, I have these two fabrics. Which one looks the best? She said, I like this one. So that's what I used. And then I got on Stitch Mania for, and just looked at all the pictures and see if I could find a pillow finish to get a little inspiration. And so I did the two strips on there. And then, look real close, I used my machine. It has specialty stitches. And I added a little specialty stitch. I had done that technique in a class that we took making a, a bag, like a tote bag. We did a specialty stitch along the seam. And so I used that idea to stitch all the way around the, the edge. Oh, come on, focus. And I thought it turned out really cute. And I just had some variegated, oh, that way, some variegated thread. It's just regular sewing thread, it's nothing fancy. But I was pleased with it and I stuffed it and it's lumpy. Fawn, I couldn't do it. I couldn't get it all unlumpy, but it'll be fine. The more they use it and everything, they'll, it'll get unlumpy, maybe. Probably not, but I was very pleased with it. So there you go. That's my finish. It only took me like five days to stitch that sucker and, and put it together. It went super quick, but I was pleased. All right, guys, that is it. Got no plans for the weekend. My husband's on call. He is a wildland firefighter with the Mississippi Forestry Commission. And the entire state forestry service is on call and on standby because of all the wildfires. There are a ton of fires been going on around here. We are super dry and super hot. And we've finally got under the governor issued a burn ban for the entire state so we're happy about that hopefully things will calm down for them a little bit but they have been blowing and going my husband and his crew have actually been very fortunate compared to some of the other counties around us we hear the radio traffic and we're forever hearing this group go one after another one after another and they give you a they give them a each fire a number and there was one day they had 18 fires and that's just for one one section one three county area that's a lot um, most of them aren't too bad but we've had a couple we've had a couple of really big ones so please don't burn stuff i'd appreciate that we even had to cancel our vacation we were supposed to leave to go on vacation next week going to branson and we had to cancel that and reschedule because all vacations have been locked down and nobody's taking any days off or anything had to get he had to get special permission to go to his va appointment yesterday and <laughs> So they, they've been bowed up, um, but we rescheduled for the first week of December, which is my birthday. So all the better. I think it'll be fine. Y'all have a great day. I'll be back later with another segment showing you a little bit more stitchy progress. Hopefully, uh, probably a finish on my Mill Hill Village and that's it. Y'all have a great day. Bye. Good morning, y'all. Part two, as promised. I got a few more things to show y'all. I finally got some stitching progress done and I'll um, show y'all that. A couple of other projects, a little bit more crochet. So let's get started. Um, I did do another crochet project. It's not a cuddle buddy. I haven't been doing the cuddle buddies, except I did have to start a couple of unicorns. A friend of mine messaged me and said, I need two more unicorns. And I'm like, uh, okay, I'm not really doing that. I messaged her back. I'm not really doing Cuddle Buddies anymore. I've got a lot of other projects to, uh, that I want to work on. When would you need them by? But I shouldn't have said that because she messaged back real quick. Oh, a couple of months is fine. No hurry. She didn't get the first part where I said I wasn't doing those anymore. But that's okay. Uh, she's a good friend and has been a very good customer. She's bought several things from me, so I don't mind. 
I'll get those knocked out. I've been very procrastinating getting to those though. Um, I got one body done and that's about it. So I need to get on that and get that knocked out. Um, I had another, I had a couple of cross stitch projects that I really wanted to work on and get done. And so I, I, I put those unicorns off until I could get that. And I also participated in a crochet along. We usually do stitch alongs here, but I did a crochet along on one of the groups I follow on Facebook. And the same girl that does all the patterns for the Cuddle Buddies does a bunch of little lovey patterns. And they are super cute, but they are much smaller. They use the same soft, squishy yarn, which is awesome and easy to work with. I love that. So I signed up to do the crochet along because I had been wanting to do one of the loveys. And that was a good excuse to get in there and get it done. And another girl, one of my friends at work, also follows the same page. And she, when the pattern was released, she had seen the little duck and said, oh, Landon needs one of those duckies. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, he's cute. And passed it off. Well, I'll get to that one day, maybe. But I used this opportunity to do the duck for her um, and participate in a crochet along. So it was a win-win. So this is what it turned out as. Cute little ducky. Got stuff on his face. Isn't he so sweet and so sleepy? Look how cute. They're small. I think he was like 16 inches, something. I don't remember what it was. 17 inches. I wrote it down. Very little stuffing, just the head and the nose or the beak are stuffed. Little knots. The arms and legs, this cute little tail little puff stitch, and he's just soft and cuddly and squishy for little hands, and he'll be perfect. So I sent a picture to my friend Amanda, and she's like, yes, I want him, please. So I will take him to work today and give him away because he's sweet. And I want to do some more. She's got several patterns. Um, there was a cute flamingo and just about everything that she's got as a cuddle buddy, she made as a, a lovey, plus others. So I'll, I'm gonna make some more of those. I need to get rid of this yarn. It is, it is overwhelming. That yarn is big and soft and squishy and takes up a lot of room. I've got a big old um, Rubbermaid tote with it full, but I had to put it in like those space bags that you suck down and two big space bags full of it in there and still the lid doesn't even close so I've got to use up some of that yarn and, and get it out of here so I'm not making any more cuddle buddies because I refuse to buy any more of that yarn I'm making everybody's body's going to be whatever color I have I ain't making any more I ain't buying any more the other crochet project I mentioned it in the first segment or maybe a, the last video I think but I've made some more scrunchies these are really popular. These will be in my, these will be in my Etsy shop. Eventually. Keep an eye out. But they're fun. They're easy to make. They're out of the Burnett Velvet yarn. And it's so soft and velvety. I like it. It's easy to work with too. But I've got a bunch of those made that I will get in my shop one day if anybody's interested. The other crafty project I did is I made some needle minders. I had, a, I had a brilliant idea. I, probably not the only one who's had this idea, but it came to me and I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> I made some needle minders out of um, little button covers and they're, they're reversible. They're two-sided. So that's the first side, a little puppy dog. And the back side is a paw. It holds the needle really good. It's pretty strong. It'll even hold scissors. That's pretty good to hold those heavy scissors. And those are, those are a little heavier than normal. But what you do is drop that one. Let's try another one. It goes on each side of your fabric. So they're and they're kind of reversible. So you whatever mood you're in, you can reverse it. And it just snaps on. The magnet is inside the button cover. 
keep dropping stuff. I can't hold on to stuff today. My fingers aren't working. So that's another one I did, just a little flower with a pink back. I thought that was a cute idea. I'll put those in my Etsy shop. Just a few that I made. Patriotic, red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue star. A little sparkle on that one. A Halloween one. A little spider. And purple backing to go with it, just because that's fun. And then a ladybug with a flower on this side. But they're nice and smooth on the edges, so they shouldn't mess your fabric up or anything. I thought that was a good feature. Ugh, drop the crap up. I, I hate dropping stuff. The floor, the older I get, the further away the floor is. And I don't like getting down there. Update on my Halloweenies pillow that I made for my friend that I showed in the first segment. She adored it. She loved it. She was very thankful and appreciative and loved it. Put it up on her mantle while I was there. Um, so she was happy about that. And that makes me happy. I like to make things for people. Most of the stuff that I have stitched, the majority of it has been for other people. Um, the few things that I have stitched for myself, very few things have actually gotten framed and put on the wall and most of it's in my little finish drawer down there. <laughs> I was going through my finished drawer. I'll have to do this another day. Maybe next time I'll get some of those out and show y'all some of the first uh, cross-stitch projects I did. There, there's some gems in there, but I've, I've still got them all and they're fun to go back and look at. But I mean, a lot of some stuff I've stitched, I, don't, I have no finishing idea in mind and I don't necessarily feel like I have to finish it. I stitch things that I think are pretty and that I'll make me happy and and then that's it. I don't necessarily have to have to frame it or finish it and, and display everything. I don't have a ton of space to, to put things out. So I stitch it to enjoy it and, and that's it. If it goes in a drawer, it goes in a drawer. It doesn't matter to me. All right, y'all. I put down the Chatelaine to get a few projects done and out of my life. And I finished the last building in Mamill Hill Village. I am so very excited about this. And here it is. Ta-da! I finished Village Inn. Lots of sparkle. It's very dark in here today. And so what I did, after I finished that, I went back, took a picture of, <coughs> of it and looked. Let's stand up so you can see. I added extra snow between all the all the buildings because there wasn't very much you know there was just a little bit of snow here and here and it stopped between the buildings and so I added extra in here and some places I came way down and added a lot extra that was a lot of a lot of snow so I've got town hardware Apothecary, the church, which is my favorite. It's beautiful. Beads, beads, beads. Krynic for the stained glass windows. Needle workshop that I named Jen Stitching Niche. Cause that's my local needle workshop. She's amazing. And then Village Inn. 
Isn't that pretty? The fabric's opalescent. The fabric's 28 count Whimsical Winter by Under the Sea Fabrics. Leslie. And I am super happy with that. And I'm super happy to be done with it too. It's been ongoing. I think I started that back in January with the first, with the church. And once I got it started on each building, they didn't take very long. It only took a week or two, depending on what else I had going on and how motivated I was to finish it. But overall, I'm done with it. And I may do another, I plan to do another set of five um, to put with it. But I don't know. I'm going to hold off on that for a while. There's other things that I want to, I want to get done first. Jen's meeting me this afternoon, this evening, when we get off work to help me pick out a frame and mats and stuff and I'll get that framed. Um, I'll stretch it myself, but I'll get them to get a frame and mat and everything and probably get them to go ahead and get them to put it together just because it's, it's easier for them to do. I've done several myself, but just let them do it, but I don't trust anybody else to stretch it and, and do all that. And, I'm, and Jen helps me pick out stuff better. So she's going to make me to do that. And then we're going to go to dinner with, with her sister, Bridget. We do that every Tuesday night. The other, um, thing that I did, one other finish I got was a freebie pattern by, with thy needle and thread. I think it was a 2009 freebie. Um, hello, ha hello, October. Hello, October. I think, um, our, my little stitchy group wanted to do a stitch along. We did the put on the hat and stitch along a couple of months ago, whenever that was. And so somebody threw this one out there to do. And so I had to kind of stop what I was doing on the village. And again, the Chatelaine I put up to get this finished. So I stitched this up pretty quick. And this is the first samplery kind of pattern that I've ever done and it's the first with thy needle and thread pattern that I have ever done and it was fun but I, I changed it up a little bit to to match more my style you know the primitive thing that's that's not me so I have to have bright colors and sparkle so Lee this is for you you wanted me to participate in sampler September. I didn't get around to that, but here's my <laughs> sampler October. How's that? And I did it on a silk weaver, opalescent fabric. I don't remember what it's called. It's one that I have had. Blue Mystery, I think. It has been in my stash forever and a day. I used Etoile, the DMC Etoile for the pumpkin and the bird. So they're both sparkly, which you can't see. There we go. And I changed every color. A, because I didn't have any of the colors that it called for. And it was hard to tell. Well, they were all DMC. It was called, all called for DMC, but they were all just real drab colors. So I just picked, some of them are Victorian Motto, some of them are DMC. It's just whatever I had. And then I tried to get all fancy. And be extra and it turned out okay it's not my favorite and I may I may tear it apart and redo it sewing does not come easy to me a lot of crafts do I can I can do okay um, but sewing just does not come easy to me even a simple stupid little pillow took me way longer than it needed to and I have to think about it I have to think very carefully about how I want to do it and how it's going to actually turn out. And I have to measure, 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 make sure I'm doing it right. And then I still screwed up a couple of times and didn't cut my fabric right. Apparently I can't read a tape measure. I can, but I don't know. I was trying to hurry. It was getting late and I was trying to hurry and wanted it finished um, Sunday night. So whatever. So what I did is I had an idea to... I've been all up in my Cricut lately trying to do some things with my Cricut because I have it and I might as well use it. And there's some fun stuff in there if you just look. But I wanted to add an iron-on 
down here at the bottom. I thought that would be fun. And so I looked through and found a spooky pumpkin fence that I thought kind of went with the pumpkin patch. And I used some sparkly iron on. You can see that. You see that? <laughs> I thought, more sparkle. Can't have too much. Let's try it. But, and then I had this um, lacy trim from somewhere. I had to go buy fabric. I didn't have any fabric that matched. So this is just an orange from Joanne, their harvest section. It was on sale. But I've got too much space. I don't like it. It doesn't look good. It needs to be, I don't know. It needs to be closer like that with the trim in there. But I have no concept of distance, so I thought, oh yeah, I'll leave an inch there and a half inch at the bottom. That'll be perfect. Well, no, when it sits up, you can't even see it. You can't see the top. You can't see the bottom one way or the other. So, oh well. It's done. I probably will just leave it, but I tried to be extra and add on some iron-on vinyl. I thought it was a cute idea. I think that's it. That's all I got. Plans coming up. Um, I'm going to finish these two unicorns real quick, probably this week. And then I will get back to the Chatelaine. I'm so excited. Um, should have some good stitchy time coming up. We don't have any, any plans going forward. Not Still not sure what we're doing for the holidays. Uh, Mike may be on call, so I don't know if we're going to be able to go home for Thanksgiving and Christmas, I only get two days off for Christmas and I don't have any more days left off to take. They're all spoken for. So we get Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off. And I don't know if we'll even be able to go home Christmas. It's too far to go to North Louisiana just for an overnight if we don't have to. So I don't know what we're going to do. Um, maybe a weekend or something when I can get off a little early on Friday and we can go. Still have our trip, our trip to Branson planned for the first week of December. So I've got to decide what I want to take. But, you know, that takes planning what kind of project I'm going to take with me. Probably a crochet project and probably a, a stitching project. I can stitch and do anything in the, in the car without any problem. And that's a good nine hour trip or more that I'll get some good stitching time in. Um, so I'll come up with something fun for that. Uh... I think that's it. That's all I can think of. Um, next time I will show y'all what I did with my, my fancy floss. You know, I was having some issues trying to decide how I was going to um, store that. So I'll show you what I did with that. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Oh! I have to put a picture in. Dang it. I forgot to film a little segment. You know, I was working on that um, shadow box for a friend at work's wedding gift. I was making the rolled flowers that I cut out with my Cricut. And then I made a vinyl decal to go on the front of the shadow box on the glass. And I finally got that done and I took pictures of it and I'll just have to insert some pictures of it at the end because I forgot to film a little segment um, before I wrapped it up and took it to work with me. But it turned out really good and she loved it. They got married this past weekend. She was a beautiful bride and everybody's happy living happily ever after. But I'll put some pictures in at the end of that. But it turned out good. That's it. Y'all have a great day. Happy stitching. See y'all next time. Bye.